I would also like to remind the House that when the gun registry was being eliminated, the Conservatives were saying that's all we need to do. And now here we are with another bill that loosens licensing and regulation. And sometime later this week, we're going to have another private member's bill that says we have to do something else. So we're on a very, I would say it's a slippery slope, but it seems more like an express train to keep making more and more and more changes at the behest of the gun lobby and forgetting the importance of keeping public safety at the center of what we do. Question commentaire, the Honorable Minister de la Sécurité Publique. Oui, Monsieur le Président. Alors, je remercie le député d'Esquire Malt, Yohan de Fuca, pour son allocution. Et je remarque que sa famille aussi a des racines et qu'ils ont, comme beaucoup de familles canadiennes, qui ont manipulé de manière sécuritaire les armes à feu. Ma question est très simple. C'est que l'ancien chef du nouveau Parti démocratique, Jack Layton, avait proposé une des mesures qu'on retrouve dans le projet de loi, c'est-à-dire la fusion des deux licences du permis de possession euh, simple et du permis de possession euh, et d'acquisition. Alors, pourquoi aujourd'hui un flip-flop, un revirement là, euh, inattendu des néo-démocrates sur une politique qui semble être leur politique de parti? Pourquoi cette mesure spécifique s'opposer qui avait été préconisée par leur propre parti? Est-ce que c'est pour une raison idéologique ou partisane? Euh, moi, je pense, en tout cas, j'invite le membre à se pencher sur la valeur de la mesure pour euh, en juger à son mérite. Honorable Member for Esquimalt, Juan de Fuca. Well, I thank the Honorable Minister of Public Safety for his question, and, uh, and I appreciate his reference to my family background for once accepting that some people on this side uh, actually have families with similar experience to those on the Conservative side. Uh, in regards to why, why are we changing our position on the bill, uh, what, what I would have to say is the proof is in the packaging. So uh, our leader may have, an, may have had an idea or suggestion uh, in the past, but it wasn't this package that the minister is bringing forward. So I've said to him very clearly, there's a couple of things that we like in this bill, but there are a couple of things we like in this bill, but there's some things we're concerned about. And so if you're going to merge those licenses, then we have to have the assurance, right, that there's proper checks for criminal activity, for mental health incidents, for domestic violence in the home. So it's not just a question of picking out one idea and saying, why don't you support this one idea? It's the whole package of measures in this bill that makes it impossible for us to support it. Uh, questions and comments? The uh, Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think it is worthy in terms of noting that this bill will, in fact, if passed, allow for more open-ended transportation of, uh, of firearms, uh, Mr. Speaker. And in Winnipeg, we get actually thousands of vehicles that are stolen every year, a population of 1.25 uh, million people. Uh, one year, we actually had in excess of 13,000 vehicles uh, stolen. I suspect, uh, Mr. Speaker, that there would be a great deal of concern in regards to that. We know quite often that it's a part of a gang initiation in terms of go out and steal a vehicle. And it seems to me that the government is not dealing with the issue of uh, illegal uh, guns, uh, possession of illegal guns. Uh, and I'm wondering if the member might want to provide some comment in, in regards to, to that particular issue. Well, member for Esquimalt, Juan de Fuca. Well, I thank the honourable member for his question. Uh, as I said in my speech, uh, I'm concerned there wasn't a broader range of people consulted about the impacts of this bill, and in, in particular, in-depth consultations with the law enforcement community on the very questions that he's raising. But there are also many groups uh, working in Montreal and Toronto, in particular, on trying to reduce gun violence on the streets. And I'm very disappointed that the minister clearly hasn't talked to these people about the bill, because the situation uh, of having most guns be stolen uh, is, is going to become much worse if we loosen the regulations on transportation of weapons. There's just, there's just no doubt about that. And so, uh, I, again, I look forward to hearing what the minister has to say uh, in committee and, and hearing from witnesses who, who represent those other parts of the Canadian society which are also concerned about the presence of guns. Uh, before we go to uh, resuming debate, uh, I ha it is my duty, rather, to, uh, pursuant to Standing Order 38, to inform the House that the questions to be raised tonight at the time of adjournment are as follows. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona in, to, in respect to the environment. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint Louis in regard to health. And the Honourable Member for Algoma, Manitoulin, Kapuskasing in regards to public safety. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Malpac. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I uh, do welcome the opportunity to uh, to speak on uh, on Bill uh, C-42, uh, an act to amend the Firearms Act and the Criminal Code, and to make uh, related amendments uh, and make a related amendment and a consequential consequential amendment uh, to other acts. Uh, 
uh, as it states in the bill, the uh, short title, uh, it could be called the uh, Common Sense Firearms Licensing Act. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Speaker, when this uh, government is calling something common sense, as you would well know, Mr. Speaker, when they say common sense, it's time for all of us to look at the fine print. Uh, and that's, uh, what we're, that's what we're going to do. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm uh, pleased to lay out today the position of the Liberal Party on this bill moving to committee. First and foremost, as we know, and I said in a question earlier, the bill is coming forward disguised as a law and order bill, but really is designed to try and reignite the support among those in the pro-gun community for the Conservative base and the Conservative Party. And as such, as we will have already heard, government MPs will try and allege, and we heard it from the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture earlier, that the Liberal Party would bring back that gun registry. Not true. To say so on the part of any speaker, Mr. Any, uh, 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 to say so on the part of any speaker from the Conservative camp would be an absolute lie, Mr. Speaker. Right. The leader of the Liberal Party previously and again today has made it clear, made it absolutely clear to quote the leader, we will quote, we will not bring back a gun registry, end of quote. It was stated in the past, it was stated in today at a scrum uh, for all, following the, uh, follow, a scrum with the uh, media following caucus uh, meeting today. Let me repeat, there seems to be a lot of yelling, uh, yelling ops at, uh, by government members. They may not like to hear the fact, Mr. Speaker, but the fact of the matter is the Liberal Party stands and the leader has committed. We will, as a Liberal Party and the Liberal leader, will not bring back a gun registry, end of quote. So to play the gun registry card, in conservative propaganda and in fundraising on the part of the conservatives would be, as I said earlier, an absolute abrogation of the truth. Indeed, it would be a lie. And so anybody who stands up in this House and says that the Liberal Party is going to bring back the gun registry is lying. And get that straight, Mr. Speaker. So let me turn, let me turn uh, Mr. Speaker, to uh, Bill C-42 as proposed. Simply put, there are good points that are helpful to those who use guns in this country. And there are troublesome policy and legislative amendments which will put public safety in Canada at risk. Possibly and definitely, I believe, will make Canadian streets less safe as a result of some of those proposals in Bill C-42. And indeed, put lives at risk, and I would submit, uh, would, uh, would put police's, police officers' lives uh, especially at risk. Therefore, the Liberal Party uh, is asking the minister and the government that Bill C-42 be split. Mr. Speaker, we call on the Minister of Public Safety to split C-42. We can support these measures. We can support creating a six-month grace period at the end of the five-year license period to stop people from immediately becoming criminalized for paperwork delays around license renewal. That is in Clause 14. We can support streamlining the licensing system by eliminating the possession-only license and converting all existing POLs to possession and acquisition licenses, or PALs. That's in Clause 11. We can support making classroom participation in firearm safety training mandatory for first-time license applicants. That's in Clause 4. And we can support amending the criminal code to strengthen the provisions related to orders prohibiting the possession of firearms where a person is convicted of an offense involving domestic violence. That's in, support, that's in Clause 30. And we can support authorizing firearms import information sharing 
when restricted and prohibited firearms are imported into Canada by businesses, and that, that I don't have the list of where that clause is. But, Mr. Speaker, we can support that because it only makes sense. Canada Border Service agencies, that RRC and plea, and police uh, forces of other jurisdictions should have that information. Therefore, the uh, clause in short, just to sum up, Mr. Speaker, we therefore call on the Minister of Public Safety to split Bill C-42. We can support several elements, as I said, the provision streamlining license paperwork, tightening safety requirements, making it harder for people convicted of domestic offenses to obtain a gun, and firearm information sharing and extending the grace period to six months. Split the bill. Mr. Speaker, split it. Assist lawful gun activity activists, sports shooters, farmers, and hunters immediately. And if the minister's willing to split the bill, we should be able to accomplish passage in this House of that segment, and I think even the NDP would support some of those aspects. We should be able to accomplish some of those aspects uh, and get the bill through by Christmas, if that is really their desire. So let me now turn, Mr. Speaker, but as we'll find out, the government really isn't interested in helping firearms uh, uh, law-abiding gun owners. They're really interested in creating a fight to leave the impression that we over here on this side of the house, uh, we're not, we just don't like those gun owners, law-abiding gun owners. That's the impression they want to leave. So they put in place a bill that has some good aspects in it for the law-abiding gun community, but has a poison pill, and I submit will damage public safety in this country. So, Mr. Speaker, therefore, uh, let me turn to those other aspects of the bill that we cannot support because it does put public safety uh, in this country uh, at risk. The, uh, the bill, in short, uh, the bill first, it eliminates the, needs, the need for owners of prohibited and restricted firearms to have a transportation license to carry these guns uh, in, their, in their vehicle. So uh, it eliminates that need uh, for every time uh, you transport. This means they could freely transport handguns or automatic weapons anywhere within their province. And in fact, we know the reality, although they're not supposed to, and in the, uh, uh, in the, ledges, uh, in the, in the backgrounder, uh, they can uh, uh, travel with uh, restricted and prohibited firearms for traveling to shooting ranges for practice as a competition, returning to an individual's home following a chief firearms officer approval of transfer of ownership, going to a gunsmith, a gun show, or a Canadian port of exit, going to a peace officer or a CFO for verification, registration, or disposal. Uh, there's such a mix of things when you give them the broad transport license, Mr. Speaker, uh, it's an accident waiting to happen. And so, you know, open transport. And of course the guns are going to be locked. There's going to be no weapon in them. These are people who don't want to break the law. But as the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Agriculture said earlier, criminals don't abide by the law. And criminals will break into those vehicles. They will take those weapons and they'll use them for wrong purposes. And so the minister, with this aspect, trying to simplify the system, is actually making the street, streets more dangerous. So we can't. We can't support that part of the bill, Mr. Speaker. Secondly, Bill C-42 would take the power to classify, classify firearms out of the hands of police the experts in keeping Canadians safe, and put it in the hands of politicians uh, like uh, the, minister, uh, the, the current minister, or might even be uh, the minister for, from uh, the member for Yorkton, or might be somebody else over there at some point in time, but it takes it out of the hands of the, 